Now, we done did our preview of this Colts and Ravens game, so you already know how I feel like it's going to go. But it's always nice to get a different perspective from one of my boys, who is a Colts fan, on the Ravens and Colts Monday Night Football. So, team, keep it clean. We have a very, very special guest on this episode. So, let's go ahead and bring him on in so he can tell you his own personal side of how he feels like this game is going to go down. Let's get it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy. You two team keep it clean. What's going on? We got my boy Culture Shock in the building. And we here to go over this game that we got coming up. Uh, Monday Night Football against the Colts. And and first, let the people know who you are, what you do. Uh, tell the people about yourself and where they can find you at, too. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Culture Shock. I'm a YouTube content creator. Find me on TikTok, Instagram, and on YouTube. You can find me on Twitter as well. All the same handle, Culture Shock. But on Twitter, is Culture Shock underscore. I make Colts content, personal opinion channel. You know, I'm not no analytics guy. I'm just a fan, normal fan talking Colts. That's where you can mm -hmm. find me, man. That's what it's about, man. And let's just jump straight into it, man. How has Carson Wentz been looking to you? I actually enjoyed his game. Um, of course, he has some mishaps, some miscues still there when it comes to setting his feet in certain passes, you know, missing the open target. But overall, in general, I think he's been a bright light for the offense. Like, if Carson Wentz wasn't out there, even with two bad ankles, I think the offense doesn't have a chance at all. But – I mean, he's been out there performing, uh, probably one of the most consistent off offensive players on the team. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, he's finding his groove after the last win against Miami, the first one of the season. He looked really good, but I think he's been getting better and better as the weeks progress and how he gets healthier, too. So I think it has a lot to do with that. But I think he's been a pretty solid quarterback. I'll take him over any other roster uh, quarterback on the roster at the moment. Oh, okay. Because who is that? Uh, Jacob E. Eringer? How do you say his name? Jacob Eason, uh, we got Sam Elliger and Brett Hulley as the backup. There you go. I, I, I done mixed the two quarterbacks together. My <laughs> fault. But um, it, all right, with 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 Carson Wentz, man, what what's is he still injured? Is he still hurt? Because I'm I'm tired of seeing uh, that <laughs> I'm tired of seeing that meme go around, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Carson, he's still hurt. He still has the uh, the ankles taped up. But I mean, last week he got the t the tape lighter. So, mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully on Monday he don't have no tape at all. But, I mean, as long as he can walk, I want him in that pocket, man. But, I mean, he's getting healthier as the weeks go on. But he's he's yeah, he's still banged up. Now, is, is it both angles? Because the, re the reason I ask is because I, I keep seeing that meme where it's like Carson Wentz just should have stayed home today. And it's the dude, like, in the line, and he got he got uh, cast on both his ankles. Man. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's both ankles, man. It's both Oof. ankles. So ha has he looked like he's been, like, immobile at all? Like, he can't run as much? Or how has he looked with the injury? Shockingly, he's still running the football. Like, against Miami, he had a big run for, I think, about 20 yards. He's still mm -hmm. running when he has to. I mean, but the offensive line isn't there, so he has to get out of the pocket. If he, because, I mean, he's a gutsy player. I haven't yeah, seen him throw the football true. out of bounds once, so he just goes for it every time. Very gutsy, yeah. but, hey, I like it. Daredevil, yeah. that's what I call him. I ain't mad at that, man. Now you you talked about the offensive line, how that was usually one of the Colts' strongest points. They considered to be or considered to have had before. I don't know about this year, but have had before one of the best offensive lines in the league. How has the offensive line been through the first four games of the year so far? Uh, to be honest, it's very disappointing. Um, and I I won't really blame it all on the offensive line, but I have to do with health. Nobody on that offensive line has been healthy this year. We even seen Big Q go down this year with that back injury. And um, even though our backup, Chris Reed, I think he used to play for the Panthers, he's been the backup for Big Q. He's been a success story so far. But overall, mm -hmm. in general, there has been – everybody on the offensive line has been hurt, literally. Um, our injury report is probably 10-man deep every week. Uh, we're going to get the injury report later on today on Wednesday. But it's it's been rough. It's been rough for the offensive line. Like no consistency. Uh, no no nobody's been the only person I've known that's been on the uh, offensive line from week one to now is Davenport, and he's probably the weakest link on that spot. I mean, there's no knock on him, but 
he just can't seem to get it together. But the offensive line just been banged up. I mean, it's good that we got Eric Fisher back, but he's still trying to work with his kinks as well. But just for yeah. for now, it's not the offensive line that we're used to seeing. And and still sticking with the offensive line, how has pass protection been? Have, have they been letting a lot of guys get to Carson Wentz throughout the first four games or what? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, he hasn't really been sacked a lot, but the Harrys is definitely there. Uh, he's mm-hmm. definitely not settled in the pocket. The pocket collapses very often. Um, but when he does have that time in the pocket, you see the success the offense gets. The chain's moving. Everything's consistent when he does have time. But in general, the protection has not been there uh, because I think our offensive line is more of a run-blocking offensive line than pass mm-hmm. protection. But if we're healthy, we can do both. But we're not healthy. So the pass protection really hasn't been there for the Colts. Man, sounds sound like you describing the Ravens almost. How are you talking <laughs> right now for real, man? Yeah. But speak, speaking of run blocking, Jonathan Taylor, um, mm. somebody who last year, especially with both of them having been rookies, got compared to J.K. Dobbins a lot. Who's better? It's Colts fans, Ravens fans going back and forth, letting their claim be known for why their running back is better. But now we can't really compare the two because one of them is out for the year. Um, so how has Jonathan Taylor been so far this season? Still ain't hit his stride yet. He had a very good second half, uh, second half of the year, his rookie year. This year he's starting off still a little slow. Uh, but I think that has to do more to game planning than him actually getting touches. Uh, I think last week he got the most touches he had all, all year so far, mm-hmm. and he got over 100 rushing yards. So I think when we add him more into the game plan, and everyone starts to get more adjustive and they start to realize that the season started and it's not the preseason no more, I think we'll start to see regular Jonathan Taylor. But he did look good last week, so hopefully that will carry over to Monday night. Prime time, uh, Coach finally on TV. We're looking won't. forward to seeing that. <laughs> yeah, ho- hopefully it won't. Now, now Hines, I feel like I'm messing up his name. What is it, Naeem Hines? Yeah, you said it right. Oh, oh wow, okay. okay. Naeem Hines. Um, Wow, I usually mess up people's names, but so that feels good to get it right. Now I know he's really a, a big on special teams for y'all, um, but how have they been using him on offense too? Still incorrectly, like I said, the game plan is just it's just not there yet. Like I said last week, we saw we seen the bright light, maybe because we finally won, but I feel like everything is starting to get the flow of the flow of motion is starting to look more stable. Uh, Naheem Himes hasn't been used correctly yet. There's a lot of people that still hasn't been used in the offense. I think week three, we only used three receivers and two running backs that whole game. Um, mm-hmm. Naheem Himes, he's a he's a dual threat. Can run out the backfield and can catch. I feel like mm-hmm. he should be more useful, but he just hasn't been used right at, either at all. I mean, the game plan is just – it's been a roller coaster. It's been a roller coaster for real. Now, a, a wide receiver, because we got Michael Pittman Jr., uh, that's somebody that I like coming out of uh, college. Um, and we, he, I think he went to USC, I believe, right? Uh, but big mm-hmm. frame, big yes, body sir. guy, uh, physical. And who else? We, y'all got, uh, I want to say Pascal. Um, T.Y. Hill, and of course, he's he's been hurt. So who, who what other receivers are there that the, the Colts have that are helping out, that are stepping up, that are contributing? Who Who else is there? To be shocking, the receiver that's been the most consistent, and that's every year, is Zachary Pascal, the most mm-hmm. consistent wide receiver out of the whole core. Um, other than that, the uh, other person you'll probably see on the field getting the catch every now and then is Michael Pittman Jr. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll get Paris Campbell on maybe a jet sweep or one of those funky mm-hmm. formation plays. Um, you know, this is his first year being healthy, so he's out there on the field. But, yeah, like mm-hmm. I said, they haven't been getting the wide receivers involved really but mm-hmm. most of most of all, most of the catches will go to Pasco, if not anybody else. Okay, all right, good to know. And as far as the tight ends, who's been the special or best tight end uh, for the Colts so far? Because you know, Ravens sometimes they, when it comes to t- covering the tight ends, so the first two weeks, I mean, we did have Darren Waller and Travis Kels, so that was some tough competition. And then the last two weeks, and both of those guys went off, but the last two weeks we had Hawkinson and Noah Fant. And they were pretty quiet for their games. But who would be uh, the Colts' tight end, the go-to guy, their premier tight end? Who, who, who is that? The number one tight end, the guy that I want to get the most reps out of all the receivers in general, is Mo Ali Cox. Big, tall, brute guy, man. Mm. But he used to play basketball uh, for VCU. The dude is just – he's just a freak of nature. And he's just 
He's that tight end you will want on your team. Run block, decent or route running, and can catch the football. He's just that much of a dominant force. And we seen that last week with two touchdowns. He got the one where he mossed Eric Rowe in the back of the end zone, and then he got one to just walking straight in the field. And then a big yeah, he had a big play for like 20 yards, and it took maybe like four to five Dolphin players to bring him down. Mm. So he's just that he's just that good of a tight end. And Carson Wentz loves to hit the tight end. So if if he gets involved, it could be a good game for sure. See, and, and speaking of tight ends and Carson Wentz, I, I just really I just knew that this offseason um y'all were gonna end up trading for Zach Ertz. I just I just knew it, but it obviously didn't happen. And um, but yeah, we'll we'll see how that tight end does, man. And it, it kind of makes me cringe a little bit when you talk about how uh we said Mo, Mo Ali Cox, how it took four Dolphins players to bring him down. Um, mm-hmm. so that could sound like either he is that strong and, and you did say he's brute big guy. Or it could mean Dolphins did some bad tackling. And Ravens, at times throughout this season, they've struggled with bad tackling. So hopefully we ain't got to see none of that this game. Now, moving on to special teams. Y'all kicker. I, I don't want to say it like this, but I don't remember his name. The kicker with the glasses. That's all Call I remember. Call him Specs. Huh? Call him Specs. Fact. Okay, I like that. And, and shout out to Madden because I was playing Madden and Madden 22, and, and it, the, this game came up on the schedule, and y'all were kicking the field goal, and I looked at Madden, got it in there. So I was like, okay, mm-hmm. Madden, I see you. So um, how has he been this season? Oh, man, he's he's the bright light. Uh, to be honest, <laughs> the games where we struggled, he was the only one putting up points. So <laughs> it's like oh, yeah. it was, a, it was a meme. Man. Yeah, Colts Twitter, they was like the best person on offense to put up points is the <laughs> kicker because it was bad, man. But, like, yeah, he's he's really consistent when, at the kicking job, you know, coming out of Georgia. So he's a really solid kicker for sure. Mm, okay. Well, that's that, that's good to hear for y'all, man. Um, mm-hmm. Now, we'll, we'll go to defense now. Defense. Um, mm. I've been here. I, 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 know, I, saw, I saw you quote tweet somebody on Twitter today who said uh, my, my guy with the, my – my favorite guy on your team because of his name, Rock Your Sin. I saw somebody call him a bust, and they listed some other players too. And you were like, "No, no, stop! Don't, don't say that! Don't, don't, don't say that!" So, how, how's y'all secondary? Because I know Malik Hooker. He, I know he was, he had been hurt a lot. He went to the Cowboys. Uh, but how, how is the state of y'all secondary right now? How has it been throughout the first four weeks? Man, secondary has been a dumpster fire, man. Mm. And, and speaking of Rocky Sins, I said uh, I stand with him. I said last year, you know, he had a little rough, but he's going to get top talent. So it's going to be like that. He wasn't a top pick coming in late in the draft. And, we, you know, this year he's been the best corner on the Colts roster. Uh, mm. He's actually been solid. I mean, he's had been banged up, but he did practice today. So rumor has it that he might be available for this Ravens game, and we're definitely going to need him out there. But, but our secondary, you know, if our pressure is not getting to that quarterback, they have a long day. It's just yeah. that's just the explanation of the secondary's position. But Rocky Sin has definitely been the best corner for the Colts this year. Hmm. So, and how has the pass rush been? Because you know, yeah, a pass rush helps out a good secondary. Secondary helps out a pass rush. It goes both ways. So, how has the uh, the pressure been uh, from Colts defense on opposing quarterbacks? Yeah, man, the pressure hasn't been there. I mean, nothing hmm. really wowed me yet. Like I said, last week against the Dolphins probably been the best impressive, uh, the best outing of this whole year so far. Uh, but I mean, we still got some brutes. DeForest Buckner had a quiet year so far. Uh, Grover Stewart, he's been really solid this year. Al Kadeem Muhammad, he's been the starter for the uh, edge rush. Nobody's seen that coming, but he he had an, a solid uh, training camp and practices. He's been looking good. He's getting most of the reps. He looks solid too. So hopefully we can bring all that pressure to Monday night. Um, hopefully they can go out there and show showcase that. Like I said, it's a primetime game. Colts don't get put on television. This is your moment to debut your type of ability. If not, then you ain't going to get no TV times. So that's just how I see it, man. But, I mean, this is the perfect chance for them to show up. Al-Kadeem Muhammad is the guy that sacked Lamar Jackson the last meeting. Hopefully he can do that again. But we'll be looking mm. forward to seeing that. Mm. Speaking of um, guys getting sacks on Lamar Jackson in the last meeting, I don't even remember if he did or not, but a pass rusher that uh, I'm sure Colts fans are very familiar with because they actually went to battle with the Ravens uh, years ago for his services when he became a free agent, and that was Justin Houston. 
Um, years ago, the Ravens were interested in him. The Colts were also interested in him, but he obviously made a decision and the Colts won out. Uh, and he put up good numbers for y'all. He was definitely a good contributor. Um, and now he's with the Ravens. So what type of impact do you think Justin Houston uh, can have on this game? Because I know, like, I'm sure for Colts players, they probably might have said it out loud. Like, oh, yeah, last week wasn't nothing personal with Jacoby Brissett. Oh, yeah, ain't no big deal. But they're probably thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, this this might be kind of personal. So with Justin Houston, how, how do you feel like what he can – how do you feel based off of how your team has been doing and how the offensive line has been doing? How do you feel Justin Houston can impact this game or may not impact this game? I feel like he can really do it, um, especially with, your, with you guys' game plan. We know you're going to send the house. We know y'all some good blitzes. That's all y'all do, uh, especially if he's coming off that right side, like I said, which has been weak since week one. If he's coming off that right side, I feel like he could have himself a nice little night, a nice Monday night football game for sure. Uh, he'd probably pop off the screen every now and then. But, you know, it's definitely going to come down to you guys' game plan. Like I said, Davenport, if he's out there, it's going to be a weak spot. Um, I know I know Houston's good at stopping the run, and our run game really hasn't been there yet. So I think he should have a solid, uh, a decent game for, uh, against us on Monday. I really do. Now, that's something that uh, is very concerning, um, especially for anybody that's a Colts fan, if the Colts running game hasn't been there. Because you got to feel like with this game, that would – play like into the Ravens hands if the Colts don't have a run game if they don't get the run game going because that could make them very very one dimensional um and with them being one dimensional if the Ravens could just pass rush all night and the Colts don't have like that guy at wide receiver who's really going to take over um then this it could certainly be something uh so we'll see how it ends up going now um Last year, uh, I ooh, I had felt for y'all when I watched that game. I, I want to say it was against the Bills. I'm like 99% sure it was in the playoffs. Because mm. um, coaching in that game from the Colts, it, it was just all kinds of bad. Um, they had several opportunities where I felt like they could have won the game and they probably should have won the game, but coaching just made some really, really bad decisions. Um, and they were almost aggressive to a fault. Now, how I, I know the record is one in three, um, but is it a one in three to where it's like coaching has been just really all kinds of bad, or is it a one in three to where things just didn't bounce the Colts' way? I think it's more of the didn't bounce the Colts' way. It comes down to execution. Um, the Colts' game plan is there, but the players aren't executing. I mean, yeah. it ain't so much the Colts can do. I mean, the yeah. coaches can do, so – I mean, like I said, uh, Michael Pittman Jr. definitely could have had maybe four touchdowns by now, but the passes didn't get to him in the red zone. I mean, he'll get it, like, if it's third and long or second and short. Oh, yeah, he'll catch that. But when it comes down to the red zone targets, Carson Wentz and MPJ just cannot seem to link up. Uh, so, and even on the, the defensive side, we could have had maybe five interceptions against the Dolphins last week, but everybody just seemed to have big mittens and couldn't catch the football. So, like I said, it just comes down to execution. If you can execute, you have a way better out, and we wouldn't even be having this discussion about game plans at all. Okay. And probably the most important question uh, of the day um, is Michael Pittman, is he still doing YouTube? <laughs> yeah, he's still doing YouTube. Yeah, he's okay. still. Well, ho hopefully in this game he'll be more focused on his YouTube channel and the numbers and stuff than he is on <laughs> catching the football. So now, with all that being said, we talked about – Offense, defense, a little bit of special teams too, even coaching. How do you think this game is going to go? Well, to be honest, uh, being as though this is going to be a big game, I think I think the Colts is going to. I think they're going to want this test for sure. Uh, I'm going to look at this. We know how Lamar Jackson is going to play. Nobody can really stop Lamar Jackson, especially in regular season form. Dude's a freaking animal. But uh, when it comes to actually, you know, I think we can have a better outing. Last time we played you guys, uh, it, was, it was like we lost we, – the Colts beat the Colts that game. Um, we all remember the pick six with Philip Rivers stumbling and falling over his feet. Um, <laughs> Jonathan Taylor fumbled that game as well. But, like I said, if none of those plays would have happened, I think the game would have been way closer than what it was. Mm -hmm. And I think we have a very good chance of, uh, you know, giving you guys a good run for your money. All we got to do is go out there and execute. 
I say they go in there with the same mentality they had last year against the Green – well, that year against the Green Bay Packers when we beat them. Rocky Sin had an interception that game with Aaron Rodgers as well. If we go in there with that same game plan, Michael Pittman Jr. had a breakout game that game as well. Go in there, watch that film, put it against the Ravens. Even though Lamar Jackson's more mobile, I think he's still a dog just like Aaron Rodgers. If you come in there with that mentality, you win the football game. Give us a win-winning field goal. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right, so we're going to see how it goes down, uh, Monday Night Football. And uh, you already know I'm going to hit you up afterwards regardless. Uh, we talk about the game. So I appreciate you hopping on. Again, let everybody know where they can find you at, where they can hit you up at too. Hey, man, appreciate the invite. Always good hey. to link with you. Follow me on Twitter, CultureShock underscore. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube at CultureShock. Instagram if you want CultureShock, but I'm more on TikTok. So just look up CultureShock on TikTok. I'm on there. Uh, but, yeah, those are the platforms where you can find me. All right, cool. Let me go ahead and follow you on TikTok right now, too, by the way. All right, appreciate you hopping on, man. Let's see how the game goes. Shout out to Graven.